St. Matthew chapter 12. Amen? Amen. Now I was tough to put a title today because this title uh, had a multi uh, meaning to it. But I want to say in, 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 uh, as a title, uh, I need a mirror. Look at somebody and say, I need a mirror. I need a mirror. If I could put a subtitle to this message, I would say, Celebration of the Wonders of God. That's what a miracle is. A celebration of the wonders of God. Anytime God performs a miracle, it just leaves you to wonder. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, Celebration of the Wonders of God. In other words, I need a miracle. Come on, somebody. Every day you get one. You might not want to acknowledge it, but you get one. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, I'm going to give you a little history because, see, miracles have history. Amen. The miracles of God, and the only one performing miracles is God. Amen. Amen. So it has to have a history to it. Amen? Amen? And we know if I were to define the word history, it simply means uh, a miracle is a divine intervention. Uh, it is a faith-affirming testament to the power of God. Amen. It is a faith-affirming testament to the power of God. It's when God intervened in the natural. Somebody say amen. amen. It's when God intervened in the natural. Amen. 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 We, we uh, you know, I'm going to read a poem and then I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> and the name of this poem is called Light Shining Out of Darkness. That's what a miracle is. It's when light shines out of darkness. And it's by William Callum. And he says here, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rise upon the storm. The in unfallible minds of never failing skill, he treasures his bright designs and works his sovereign wheel. He fearful faints, fresh courage takes, the clouds he so much dread, and big with mercy and shall break in blessings upon your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble mind, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence is hiding a smiling face. His blessings will ripen fast, unveiling every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but it's sweet with beautiful flowers. Blind unbelief is shooting ears and scan his works in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he has made his plan. Amen. 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 God make his plan. Right. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love the miracles of God. Amen. That's why the songwriter say, it takes a miracle to put the stars in place. It takes a miracle to bring the world. Thank you for the 
about you. I was a mirror. Look at somebody and say, I'm a mirror. You gotta say it like you mean it.
that God is still in charge. Yes. God took a miracle to form the universe. Yes. God took a universe to create all the angels. Yes. God took a universe and made it his world. And on this world that we live on the third rock from the planet of the sun, uh, we see that God made human beings. Yes. And it took a miracle to make a human being. Yes. Man, can you figure out today how bones are formed in the womb? Amen? Yes. He knows that it all comes together, but he ain't quite figured it out yet. That's a miracle of life. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He gave you life, and that's a miracle. I'm going to keep saying miracle until they get into your brain. I'm going to keep saying miracle until you hear it a hundred times. And then it's going to dawn on you. Yeah, yeah, I am a miracle. You're going to walk around and they say, hey, that's, I'm a miracle. It don't matter how much money you got, you're still a miracle. It doesn't matter how broke you are, you're still a miracle. It doesn't matter what you've been through, you're still a miracle. Whatever you're going through, you're still a miracle. Somebody say, I'm a miracle of God. I'm a light shining out of darkness. We see here what Matthew had to say about uh, miracles. Amen. We see some wonderful blessing here in verse 38. It says, And certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered and said, Master, we would see a miracle or a sign from you. It's amazing, ain't it? And he answered and said unto them, to them, these are the Pharisees and the scribes always looking for something. I got some of them in my family too. They, somebody. they only want something. Uh, Come on, somebody. Uh, you only see them when they want something. Amen? A uh, evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. A sign, and there shall no sign be given. Uh, and you have to replace the word sign here with miracle. He said that there is no miracle be given but the miracle of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights, and I want you to see this clearly here because I heard preachers say the word well ain't in the Bible. They say it was a great fish. But here it says that Jonah was three days and three nights, and the well what? All right, I want you to see it's there now. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repent at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Oh my God, Jesus is talking about miracles now. The Queen of the South, Queen of Sheba, shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uppermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Behold, as wise as Solomon was, there's one greater than Solomon. Amen. Who can be wiser, more richer than Solomon? Nobody but Jesus. It takes a miracle to be that, you know. Verse 3, 43 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Come on, somebody. Then he says, This unclean spirit have a, a conversation with itself. I will return unto the house of my house from which I came. This demon is calling your house that he used to live in my house. Y'all paying attention to this? And he's coming back to get in. But you got to be there waiting with something in your hand. All right. Come on, somebody. In order to deal with these demons, you got to have a miracle at hand. Right. Come on, somebody. Then he said, I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he has come, he found his empty, swept, and clean. I mean, it was in order. All right? And he found out I can't get in by myself. Mm -hmm. So he go get his posse. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all can't win now. Yeah. He goes and he takes with himself seven other demons of spirits more wicked than himself. Mm -hmm. My God, something worse than the last one you got? And he showed up with some better than him? Yeah. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last thing of that man is worse than the first. Yes. My God, seven demons worse. Even so shall it be also unto the wicked 
Verse 4 it says, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, look here, Jesus. Your mama out there and some of your brothers standing outside. They want to talk to you. Jesus come right back in verse 48 and says, But he answered and said unto him, and told him, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Sounds like a good question, huh? Especially after he started talking about spirits. And he stretched forth his hands towards his disciples. And he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. Come on, somebody. He stretched his hand forth and said, My mother and my brother, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Somebody say amen. Isn't that important to celebrate life with a miracle? Because the only thing when God saved you from your sin, it was a miracle of love and grace. Amen. You have to have that love and that grace on the inside so when them demons come back to attack you, they come back to try to get back in your house that God saved you from, that God delivered you from, you got to have something for them. You got to have the word of God built up on the inside so when the enemy comes, he don't steal your miracle. He don't call your unclean spirit to try to raffle your feathers. To try to upset your mind. To try to get you on a danger course. God wants us to enjoy this great miracle. Yeah. This miracle, this celebration of life. Yeah. This celebration of the wonders of God. Amen. Yeah. You ought to thank God for your miracle. Yeah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For my miracle. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this wonderful celebration. For this wonderful celebration. You know, it reminded me in Scripture. I want to talk about, you know, the Bible said there's over 65, teaches there's over 65 miracles that can be accounted for in the scriptures. I mean, that's something, ain't it? Amen. Over 65 miracles. Amen. Amen. And Jesus made it clear to you and I that every miracle that he saw the Father do in the Old Testament, he performed it in the New Testament. Come on, somebody, talk to me. We ought to thank God every day when you got your health and strength. Yeah. You ought to thank God every day if things are intact. You ought to thank God every day you got a job. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I, somebody should have hollered off of that one. Amen. Yeah. You ought to thank God even if you got a job and got a pay bill. Thank you, Jesus. And yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You see, a miracle is a light shining out of dark. And I'm reminded that when, and I'm going to talk a few a little bit about miracles, increase your faith this morning. I hope you don't mind, amen? But I'm reminded that when I read the scripture that Jesus, uh, during the time when he came back to his old neighborhood of Galilee, there was a special wedding going on. This wedding where uh, apparently somebody must have knew Jesus pretty good. They invited Jesus' mother, Mary, they invited his father and the family. They even invited Jesus and his disciples. Come on, somebody. And so while they was enjoying this feast, all the dignitaries was around eating and having a glass of wine and eating all the festive and food and, and enjoying the festivity of a, a good seven-day wedding feast. Somebody say amen. amen. And somewhere along the course of time, they ran out of wine. Come on, somebody. And it was brought to Mary's attention. Mary could have known the mother. The mother could have said something to the, to the man that was getting married. And then and, and word got back to Jesus. And Mary said to Jesus, they had a wine. And Jesus said, well, what do I have to do with you? I would have been slapping my mouth if I had said something like this to my mom. Come on, somebody. Ain't no only one. It took a miracle. Come on, somebody. It saved me. Amen. Because there was a time I used to talk back to my mom. Amen. I heard the amen. amen. And then I got slapped in the mouth many times. Amen. For talking back. Amen. So you see, when I say it took a miracle for God to save me, I know what a miracle consists of. Because I know I was on my way to a devil's hell, but somehow God looked through time. 
time and recognize my wrongness. And God probably figured I could do something with him. Amen. It took a miracle. I don't know about you. Amen. But I want you to understand something. Jesus was at this wedding feast and they were enjoying themselves. And it is a sad thing when you have plenty of food and plenty to eat and plenty to drink. And all of a sudden, you're going to have this feast for seven days and then you run out of food. Come on, somebody. You've been to some folks' house and you look around. I've been to weddings and my God, and they ran, they didn't even have no food in. It was one of them ghetto weddings. Amen. <laughs> Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. You know what I'm trying to say? Somebody put a potluck dinner together. Somebody forgot the greens and the macaroni and cheese. Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody. I mean, just kind of put together, throw it together. Then they looking for somebody to set the table up. It ain't even no knives and forks. Oh, my God. I said, what kind of wedding feast is this? Amen? But I ain't calling no names. Come on, somebody. I just said, Lord, it took a miracle for me to stop on my Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Amen? That's a miracle. Amen? Yeah. Thank God for all things. But at this wedding feast that Jesus was at, there was six, the Bible said, water pots that they used for, for purification of the Jewish rites. And the Bible said there were six of them in each one of these water pots held between 20 and 30 gallons of water. And normally they would be filled with water, but these, these water pots were empty. And Jesus said to, the, to the, those servants that were at the wedding feast, I want you to go and fill these waters up and fill them to the brim. I don't know about you, but whenever Jesus gets ready to bless, I want my brim to run over. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And I'm here to tell you today, he said, now scoop out a cup of water and take it into the cup. Amen. The Bible said when they took a cup of this water that was turned from water to wine to the governor, the governor was sitting there licking his lips. Come on, somebody. And then he called the bridegroom. Now, you need to understand something here about a Jewish wedding. That it was customary that the that the bridegroom went to the went to the bride's house and picked her up, and, and the whole entourage went back to his place to eat and to drink and to enjoy a seven day of festive activity. Somehow they ran out of food. They ran out of wine. Come on, somebody. You know when the food and the wine is gone, folks are gone. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm not advocating you start drinking wine. Get that idea out of your head. Come on, somebody. I want you to see a miracle in the process. And when they scooped up this glass of water and took it into the governor, and he was licking his lip, he called the bridegroom and said, Most me. When they have a wedding, they put all the good stuff out first. And when man that had his full of eating and drinking, then he bring out the stuff that's worth. But thou hast saved the good stuff for last. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, when Christ can put his hand in your life, he's going to change everything about you. Amen. I'm here to tell you, when Christ is at your wedding, Christ is in your life, Christ has some connection, he can perform a miracle in any area of your life. Amen. You don't believe that today, huh? Yes. Look at your life and see what God has done. Yes. Look where God brought you from. Yes. Yes. Look where you were messed up and open drugs and cocaine, messed up and fornicating and running the streets and hanging out all night. Just look at the miracle of God. Yes. 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 What a wonderful miracle. Yes. You are a miracle of God. Look at somebody and say, I am a miracle. I'm 
believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Amen. You got to say it like you mean it now. At least you can say amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm amen. the Holy Spirit you. Amen. 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 You see, that feast lasts for seven days. And God will give you everything you need to meet you out to the end of your needs. Yes, he said, I'll never leave you. It's a promise. He promised, I'll never leave you, nor will I walk out on you. When others will walk out on you, forget about you. I think when the song is said, when I went to survey the cross, when I went and looked at the cross and evaluated my life, it took grace and it took mercy for God to perform the miracle. Jesus said to, to those when Mary said, whatever Jesus tell you to do, <laughs> look at somebody and say, whatever Jesus tell you to do something, you have to go ahead on and do it. Because when you go and do it, there's a miracle.
Jesus. Just like when you tell some folks about things, about the word. It's amazing to me. A preacher can preach. Been preaching for 30 years. And say by faith in the name of Jesus, you're healed. Come on, somebody, folks, look at you like y'all looking at me right now. But the doctors say, you got cancer. Come on, somebody. And you are taking that his word and says that lying demon speak right here. in your body. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. Dip, snub, and smoke tobacco. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Chew tobacco and spit. Come on, somebody. Get drunk as a little steel and smell like a skunk. Come on, somebody. If you party all night long and then fall in the church and say, heal me, Lord. <laughs> Something don't line up. What you know what I'm talking about? From that part of the wood where they'll pull off a piece of chewing the back and spit out in a minute. Huh? <laughs> I tried dipping stuff one time, pull somebody. I tried chewing the back and nobody told me I was supposed to spit it out. I started spitting <laughs> Check. 